The prosperity of countries and individuals has changed over the past centuries. And the main reason for it is related to the fundamental parts of the economy, the aspects of the economy uh, that provide the base of production. Uh, nature of economies has changed uh, from being predominantly agricultural uh, to industry and manufacturing. And now we're at a stage where services uh, based on skills are the factors that contribute uh, to growth of economies and prosperity of countries and individuals. Initially, land was the main factor that contributed to production. Uh, then since uh, the Industrial Revolution, uh, investment capital became an added but very significant factor. And now from the middle of last century, uh, what we have experienced is that the skills have become an added but fundamental part of economic growth and production. And, and this change has brought a number of other changes with them uh, that have contributed to the current state of economies. Skills and economic performance are related in, in many different ways. One of the major effects of this skill-based economy uh, that started uh, in the 20th century is that a middle class was created. And that has changed the structure of income distribution in countries around the world forever. Uh, there are other fundamental relationships as well. Uh, there are three in particular that I'd like to refer to now. One is the link between uh, skills and lifetime earnings. And the studies around the world show that earning levels of two times or three times higher over the lifetime are quite common for university or higher education compared to completion of secondary education. The second effect is the link between employment opportunities and skills. When we consider employment rates around the world uh, for university graduates, compared to high school graduates, or the labor force without a high school graduation diploma, we find that differences of 30 to 40 percent in employment rates are common. Uh, in many countries, uh, you would notice that this changes uh, across uh, the business cycle, but the differences are very prominent and become bigger uh, during recessions as well. The third effect is the link between skills and productivity and growth. And countries that have invested in skills uh, in the past decades have been experiencing and showing much higher growth at this point in time. So the link between an additional year of education and earnings uh, is significantly high around the world and in New Zealand. Uh, some recent measures show that the world average returns to an additional year of education is 12%, which compared to most investments is, is quite significant. Uh, in New Zealand, uh, some of the recent research uh, that I've done shows that the return to university education is between 9 to 12% per year. Higher education matters uh, for many reasons, uh, but two that I'd like to uh, talk about today uh, are, are, are the following. Uh, one is that among all the policy tools that are available uh, for lifting the standard of living of disadvantaged population groups, uh, education, and in particular higher education, is the most effective policy in the long term. Uh, it takes longer. Uh, sometimes the results become fully manifest in 20 to 25 years. And for this reason, as a policy tool, it may not sometimes get the attention that it deserves. Uh, the other uh, reason why it really matters is that the sectors uh, that are showing the highest growth at this time and they will continue to be important for countries are those that require skills. And that includes technology, innovation, and high-skilled services. There are a number of forces at work uh, in relation to the higher education sector uh, in the future decades. One of the effects that is expected to continue is that skills are important to economies and they will continue to be fundamentally important. Uh, so for that reason, demand for higher education will continue to exist. Uh, the second effect is that the demand for education from Asia is going to become a lot more prominent. 
uh, is partly the age effect uh, in that more than 62% of the age group in the world uh, of 15 to 29 years uh, lives in Asia at this time. A second effect is that the middle class in Asia is growing very significantly. And both of these factors are going to contribute to a much higher demand uh, for higher education. A third effect is that education will become a lot more global. The globalization of, of the higher education sector will become more prominent. And that is relevant to both the students and graduates uh, of higher education that will be working in a much more global economy and, and their education will have a much more global application. Uh, and it will also have impacts uh, for institutions in forming partnerships uh, with other global partners. Finally, uh, higher education of high quality has the highest return uh, for graduates. The lesson for New Zealand is that skills will continue to be important in the world economy. And uh, both the provision of higher education and also work in the skilled sectors of economies will become much more global and competitive. Uh, so for New Zealand, it's important uh, to be mindful of opportunities that exist and uh, challenges that we may face in maintaining our leading position uh, in having a skill-based economy and also a provider of high-skilled education.